moving on to phase two of B-cell development is really kind of the schooling, the education of B-cells. And so B-cells are educated in the bone marrow. So we are looking at location-wise, we're looking at the bone marrow, oops, we're looking at the bone marrow primarily, but some of the education, some of the uh, additional education, let's call it continuing ed, <laughs> happens out in the secondary lymphoid tissue. So the bone marrow. Now it's pretty fun, you know, when we talk about the B cells and, and bone marrow, and it makes sense. It's like, yeah, well, we call a B cell, we call the cell a B cell because it's, you know, developed and educated in the bone marrow. Uh, and bone marrow starts with B and so does B cell. But actually um, the B doesn't come from bone marrow. The B actually comes from bursa um, and bursa would be like the bone marrow equivalent in a bird. So, cause that's where it was first discovered. B cells were first um, elucidated from that, that area. But anyway, we can just say B for bone marrow. Okay, that was your little bit of knowledge, a little, um, um, trivia knowledge for you. All right, so let's go ahead and just talk about what happens during phase two, during this very important education developing of our, our B cell now that has been made. And we have a B cell receptor that um, we have an immature B cell actually entering phase two, right? And um, the, our population of B cells can't be immature. It has to be trained in order for it to be able to recognize pathogen. And uh, so our population of our immature B cells really has to have a wide repertoire of receptors with many different antigen specificities. And we want it to recognize any true pathogen, but there's no reason to think that some of these specificities can't be for self tissue. And, and normal constituents of the body. So there are actually going to be checks in place to make sure that these B cell receptors that recognize self tissue um, or these self reactive B cells are removed from population. So this is where like the knowledge of self versus non-self starts to be very important because we wanna have a B cell repertoire that recognizes pretty much anything non-self, but yet we want it, um, the population to not have receptors that are self-reactive or bind to normal body or self proteins or self antigens. So to prevent these types of self-reactive responses, immature B cells that encounter self antigen and react are actually prevented from continuing on through development. And so they are, they are, I mean, essentially killed um, and not allowed to keep moving along the maturation stage stages. So selection for these B cells is actually going, these self-reactive B cells will actually start in the bone marrow and where the bone marrow is going to have antigens that are all over the body, self-antigens. Um, and, and making sure that B cells don't interact with any of those self antigens. For a B cell that doesn't interact with self antigens, they're considered to be called self tolerant. They can tolerate self antigen and just pretty much ignore it. Um, and that means that the heavy chain and the, ver uh, the light chain variable regions were rearranged in a way that they, they don't um, interact with self antigen. Um, so they're able to go on and move on to the next stages of development to education. But for immature B cells that do interact with self antigen, they're going to be arrested at that stage of development and really removed from circulation. They're retained in the bone marrow. And um, instead of letting them just executing them right away, this is an education process. And so we let the B cell continue to try to change up you know, hey, you got a bad receptor, see if you can fix that before we let you out. And so we'll we'll look through um, um, how this all happens in these details, or as we look at the, the details of um, phase two. Okay, so that was kind of the overview. Okay, so we have at this point a B cell that is immature, meaning it has a B cell receptor on the surface. That means it has a rearranged heavy chain that is associated with a rearranged light chain and Ig alpha and Ig beta are there as well. Um, Reg enzymes have been shut down because the light chain has rearranged, but totally not closed down completely. They do remain 
um, there is a slight expression of Rag proteins that are there because if a B cell is self-reactive, it's allowed to go back and fix, or at least try to fix that variable chain um, or the, the variable region of the light chain through a process called receptor editing. And so those, sorry, those Rag enzymes will be turned on again to just allow for a little bit, a um, little, some slight changes with that variable region. And so continuing the rearrangement might make a new light chain that's functional. Uh, and that light chain can assemble with the old heavy chain. And now you have a new antigen specificity. And then this time the B cell receptor uh, with the new light chain doesn't react to self antigen, then the B cell can continue and say, okay, good. You went back and you fixed your receptor and now it's not um, self reactive. Or we can say, oh good, now your B cell receptor is self tolerance, go on and and do you know fight the good fight but if even after receptor editing that b cell receptor still recognizes self antigen and there are still options for light chain rearrangement like they haven't all been exhausted yet there can be more receptor editing and so it's pretty pretty nice because the investment of making an immature b cell takes a lot and the body would want to ditch all of those cells just because they're self-reactive when they could go back and just have light chain um, edits being made and hopefully be able to save some of those cells. And a lot of them are actually saved, but inevitably some of them just can't. Some B cells, they just try and they try and they try and they just can't make a B cell receptor that doesn't recognize self. And so what happens then is that B cell does not go on to survival, and it actually dies by apoptosis. We call this clonal deletion because any cell that could potentially have been made from that first parent cell will never exist. And so the entire clone has been deleted because that one parent cell was never allowed to go on and go through um, further development. For the most part, B cells save a lot of those developing cells through receptor editing. So many, many are saved, many more are saved than are completely deleted through clonal deletion. But it's kind of a nice way to, to save the investment and just go, go back and try that light chain again. Go back and try that light chain again, but then pretty much it's like, okay, you can't do it. You're gonna, you're going to just die. Now, those are four antigens that um, are probably, you know, just hanging out attached to self tissue. But self antigen can also be found in soluble form. And so when a B cell has a B cell receptor that recognizes soluble antigen, the light chain, there's, there's no... Um, there's no signal for the light chain to go back and rearrange. And there's also no signal for the B cell to die by apoptosis, but rather the B cell just becomes worthless, gets this like null signal and they just become unresponsive. And we call this a state of energy. So energy is when a self reactive B cell recognizes soluble antigen. Because soluble antigen can be out there and we still don't want B cells to react to it and make antibodies. So rather than just killing it though, it just becomes anergic. So anergic B cells are not activated um, if they recognize then self antigen or come into contact with self antigen, but they also don't live very long. And so they'll die within a few days compared to a normal B cell um, that can live a few weeks. Okay, so energy. So really we have, we have three outcomes for an immature B cell when it gets tested for the ability to bind to self antigen. One, if it binds self antigen, it can go back and fix its receptor through receptor editing. And so um, that saves a lot of B cells. And then they can go on to the next stages of development. Two, they could exhaust their 
abilities or options for receptor editing and end up dying by apoptosis. Or three, they could interact with soluble self antigen and then become they become rendered energic. So those three possible fates can come out of um, bone marrow testing for self antigen. Because this happens in the bone marrow, any cell that survives um, either through receptor editing or just first time around, they're gonna have that self tolerance. And because it's in the bone marrow, we call it central tolerance because the bone marrow is a primary lymphoid organ. Okay, but that would be too easy if we were done there. Uh, we have to remember that not all self antigen are encountered in the bone marrow. It's gonna have a lot of self antigen, but there's still going to be tissues outside of the bone marrow that have special markers on them that wouldn't be around in the bone marrow. So B cells would never get to be tested um, on its ability to bind or not. And so um, when B cells leave the bone marrow, then they're going to move out to the secondary lymphoid tissues. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what do we have here is the immature B cell um, tolerant towards bone marrow self antigen, but so they have central tolerance, but if they leave and they get into the blood or they get into the other areas of the body, um, they might still recognize antigen, self-antigen. But at this point, because they left the bone marrow, they don't have the option to edit their receptors anymore. Once they leave the bone marrow, any somatic recombination events are concluded. There's not going to be any receptor editing. And so really then they're limited to two options if they're self-reactive outside of the bone marrow. They die by apoptosis or they become energic. And so when we look at tolerance then that is created outside of the bone marrow, we call it peripheral tolerance because it can happen either in the tissues or the secondary lymphoid tissues, really anywhere else outside of the bone marrow. So we can have central tolerance and we can have peripheral tolerance. We're gonna keep with this same um, idea and we're gonna look at phase three as well in this lecture. And now we're moving because we have the bone marrow, the education has occurred. Um, did I have this? I wanna go back and look at one thing. I think I forgot to say a term, negative selection. Okay, so negative selection is when any B cells that are self-reactive are removed from circulation or gone back to edit their receptors or whatever, but that's called negative selection, okay? Because then phase three is called positive selection. So sorry, I didn't bring that up earlier. Negative selection is going to ensure that we don't have self-reactive B cells, either central tolerance or peripheral tolerance. Positive selection is going to be where B cells are selected for their ability to um, interact with the secondary lymphoid tissue. And so this is where they finally get to fully mature because we still have immature B cells at this point. They have high IgM on their surface as a B cell receptor. They might have some IgD on their surface as a B cell receptor, but they're still immature. They're not fully mature. And during this phase three, or this positive selection is when a B cell will get the survival and maturation signals to actually go on and become a fully mature B cell. So happens in the secondary lymphoid tissue. We're going to be using this schematic of a lymph node um, a lot throughout the semester. No, though, even though we're looking at a lymph node in this image, this can be any secondary lymphoid tissue, malt, galt, any of any, uh, the um, secondary lymphoid tissues, not just lymph nodes, but this is what we use um, 
for diagramming. Okay, so during this third phase of positive selection, we still have our immature B cell, has the immature, has the B cell receptor that has tolerance though um, against self, so it's non self reactive, will enter the lymph nodes or other secondary lymphoid tissues, and they're going to move to the area called the primary lymphoid follicle. So they're going to come in through the blood vessels because they're going to be traveling through the blood, and they're going to enter through the blood vessel. They can also come in through a high endothelial vessel, the blood vessel, okay? Either way. Um, and then they're going to migrate into this primary lymphoid follicle. It's gonna be more on the outer cortex area of the lymph node. And they are going to interact with a set of cells called follicular dendritic cells, FDCs. These are not the same as myeloid DCs. So follicular dendritic cells make up like the structure of the, the lymph node, but myeloid dendritic cells are what actually are involved in the immune system. Mm. Um, getting the immune system going, which we'll look at a little bit later. But just know that there's two different types of dendritic cells now. When these B cells get into the primary lymphoid follicles and start to interact with the follicular dendritic cells, they're going to get a signal from those dendritic cells that say, yes, you go on, you survive. So they actually received this survival signal but it's packed in there. It is packed. It would be like you walking into a club with thousands of people and trying to get your way up to the bar and talk to the bartender. That's what these B cells are trying to do. And so it's tough. And so sometimes B cells just never get that attachment or that interaction with the follicular dendritic cells. And that means that they are going to um, leave the lymph node and continue with circulation. Oh, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. They, they will not get the signal to survive, and so they'll, they'll never make it out. Those that do interact with the um, follicular dendritic, dendritic cell get the survival signal. They're positively selected, and then they can go on and start to be part of the adaptive immune system. Now, there's probably not going to be specific antigen right there waiting for them. And so um, so they get to leave the, den, um, the lymph node or the secondary lymphoid tissue and enter circulation. But because they got that survival signal, that maturation signal from the follicular dendritic cell, they are now known as a mature B cell. Now, they're mature but they still have not come into contact with antigen. So they're mature, but they're naive. They're naive, mature, mature, naive B cells because they have not seen antigen yet. Once they do meet specific antigen, then they will respond by proliferating and undergoing differentiation and end up moving into a plasma cell that produces antibody. And we're gonna look at all that in depth later. Um, yeah, but mature B cells that have not encountered, oops, have not encountered antigen are called naive B cells or mature naive B cells. So many cells try to get there. Two and a half million cells a day go through B cell development. Um, and, you know, a bulk, a bunch of them will make it out. Some of them won't. Um, about 30 billion B cells um, will eventually leave the bone marrow to join circulation. They have to compete with access to these follicular dendritic cells, compete with access to antigen, to T cells, all of that with all these other B cells. And sometimes they just don't get their maturation signal and then they die. But those that do get the survival signal go on to become mature, naive B cells um, will actually live around 100 days. That's a half-life. And so um, for several months, they'll be around. Um, yeah. So, but they will eventually die if they never come into contact with their specific antigen. It's kind of a sad story, right? Okay, let's stop there. And then we'll look at the last three phases together in the last lecture.